Hello, I'm your host, Owen White, for this week's NASA News. I hope all is good for everyone watching. Congratulations to the Fall Sport Award winners, and good luck to all the people participating in winter sports. Please support the high school and come run the December Dash on 5K on Saturday, December 11th, right here at NASA Regional High School. You can sign up the day of the race. Now on to this week's lineup. So we have Top Story with Gianna Cassell, High Five with Joey Forgione on Irish Tap Dancing for Charlotte LeBranch, Sports by Carson Winslow, Things to Do by Brad Hardy, Health Tip by Sadie Trudell, Factor Fiction by the Honors Criminology Class, Street Talk by Joey Forgione on If Your Tree is Real or Fake. This has been your host, Owen White. Now on to Top Story. Welcome to NASA News. I'm Gianna Casale and your top story. Today I'm outside of Norma Jean's culinary class, where today the students are making different types of cookies from around the world. NASA is lucky to have this course at the high school teaching the students baking skills that they will use later on in life. Let's go into the class and see if we can get any interviews from any of the students. So what skills are the students learning in this class? Well, baking and pastry is largely chemistry. So measuring is a really important part of it. Um, how to measure, what types of measuring cups to use for what types of ingredients. Following the recipe is huge. Mm -hmm. That's a tough skill to master. And I've taught classes to adults too, and it's the same, it's the same issue. Um, that's probably, I would say, the toughest thing for people to learn when they're learning how to cook, is how to follow the recipe. Um, and sometimes that's because certain recipes can be confusing. They can do things like if they want to change the color, give it a little food coloring on the icing or something like that. Um, they can switch up their extracts, the flavorings that they're adding to change the flavor a bit. Um, they can add things like orange zest or lemon zest or things like that. So I like to, after we do the recipe the way it is, then I like to encourage them to try add, switching it up a little or find out what they would do. Um, one of the things they answer after each class is, if I, if I made this again, how, could, how would I make it different? What could I do to make it different? How would I like to see this? Thank you. Yep. Hi, I'm Brett Hardy with this week's Things to Do. The holiday season approaching is now is your time to do all your holiday shopping. You should do this before it gets too late and approaches too close to the holiday seasons. On the 11th and 12th, there is, will be a wintry mixed holiday concert in West Barnstable. The Cape Cod Choral is hosting their annual holiday concert with fun songs for the festive season. And on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m., there will be a Christmas parade in Edgartown on Main Street. The parade will have floats, animals, music, and dancers, and I highly recommend that you check it out. On Thursday through Saturdays, on December 9th, 10th, 11th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, at 9.40 p.m., the Element Theater Company is hosting a Christmas carol with live music and sound effects. These are very fun Christmas events, and I highly recommend that you check them out if they interest you. There have also been a number of new movies released the past few months to kick off the holiday season, including Motherly, a horror movie about a single mother and her daughter trying to start a new life but are attacked at their farmhouse. In Sweet Home, Home Alone, a movie about a married couple who tries to steal back possession from a troublesome child. In Silent Night, a movie about a couple at a family dinner, but something does not go quite right. This is a horror movie. And I highly recommend you check out these new movies if they interest you, and these Christmas activities if these are things you're interested in. This has been Brett Hardy with Things to Do. Hi, I'm Rocco Colucci, a special reporter for this, uh, this week's High Five Student of the Week, and I'm here with Madeline Schnitzer, a very talented Irish step dancer who just placed third in the region in her competition, and she qualified for Worlds. What kind of dedication to your craft does it take to get that far? Um, a lot. I don't know. <laughs> How often do you practice Irish step dancing? Uh, four days in the studio, and then usually like three days at home, so about seven days. Okay, um, uh, how many other girls were in the competition? Uh, there were about 82. Oh, wow. Okay, um, 
And where are the world? Worlds is in uh, Bel. Worlds is in Belfast this year, Belfast, Ireland. Oh wow! All right. Well, that's been your report. I'm Rocco Colucci. This is Madeline Schnitzer. Have a great rest of your day. So I'm here with Charlotte LeBranch, who is currently ranked the 27th best Irish step dancer in New England and the 43rd best Irish step dancer in the country. And that's a pretty big accomplishment, Charlotte. So just want to ask you a couple questions about how you started and just a lot more about Irish step dancing. I'm not sure a lot of people are very educated on that. And just want you to fill us in. So when did you start Irish step dancing? I started dancing 10 years ago um, when my cousin started dancing and I thought it looked cool, so I joined and yeah, I just really liked it. Yeah, well that's nice. So obviously that's a very big accomplishment, but do you have, is that in your mind the biggest accomplishment you've had or was there other accomplishments along the way that you prioritize over this one? Uh, this past summer I was able to travel to Phoenix, Arizona. That's the, far, the farthest I've traveled. Um, but usually they're within the New England area, um, like Boston and Connecticut. Hmm, exciting. How was the uh, dancing in Arizona? It was pretty hot down there. Yeah? Yeah, it was like 110 degrees. Wow. So, what are your future plans for dance? Well, with senior year coming to a close, it's going to be hard to continue in college. But I help my dance teacher teach the younger beginner classes, which is really fun. And I also help some of the champions um, train. Very nice. So, do you know how to do any other types of dance? Well, yeah. Um, I can do, sometimes my friend Joe and I do some Zumba. <laughs> now, the word on the street is you're quite the break dancer as well. Yeah, you know, sometimes I break out with some break dancing, you know. The, and yeah. Mm, it seems like a very fun time. You seem like quite the dancer, I must say. Um, Thank you. Well, with that being said, this interview has now come to a conclusion. So, Charlotte, I want to thank you for being our NASA High Five Student of the Week. Yes. And you are our first dancer of the week. And I wish you the best of luck with all of your dancing passions and whatnot. Thank so, you. thank you. And happy holidays. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carson Winslow, bringing you the latest in NASA Sports News. Winter sports are coming up soon, and here at NASA News, we would like to list the upcoming sports that you could partake in. We have boys and girls hockey, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls swimming, wrestling, which is usually a boys sport, but girls are allowed to join in as well, and boys and girls winter indoor track. The team started the winter season the first Monday after Thanksgiving, and many of the teams will be starting competition in the coming days. To see the master schedule, please go to NASASports.org. And from there, you can see the schedules, the records, and even the rosters. Hope to see you at one of the games this year. The athletes would really like for you to come up down and cheer for them. On an Unrelated notes, we here at NASA News would like to wish the New England Patriots the best of luck this season. Their new quarterback, Mac Jones, has gotten the fans cheering for them once again. This has been Carson Winslow, signing off. Hi, I'm Sage Chadel with your Health Tip of the Week. This week I'll be discussing ways to be mindful and learning to take a second to be in the moment. Having mindfulness is important when in life right now is always moving fast. Always being on the go and not taking time for yourself can be bad for your mental health. Taking the time every day, even if it's just five minutes, can improve your health. Taking a walk, following your breathing, or just being with yourself are all examples of being mindful. Meditation comes in many forms, but just taking a few minutes a day for yourself to breathe can help you more than you would think. So remember, whatever is going on in your life, Taking that minute to breathe can help you tremendously. I'm Sasha and that was your health tip of the week. Welcome to Fact or Fiction, brought to you by the Honors Criminology class. I'm Audrey Silva. According to Larry J. Siegel, the author of Criminology the Core, abuse of women increases as they get more powerful and men become envious and resentful of their success. That's fiction. Research shows that the rates of victimization of women decline as they are empowered socially, economically, and legally. This was surprising to me. Um, I don't know why, but... I kind of just assumed that it was because of power and envious 
and resent. Um, <laughs> this has been Fact or Fiction. I'm Audrey Silva. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Brad Hardy with Fact or Fiction, but the Honors Criminology class. This is from the Criminology textbook written by Larry J. Siegel. Fact or Fiction. Most kids who get into serious trouble fall in, a, in with a bad crowd when they are teens. This is fiction. Chronic offenders begin their career, begin their criminal careers at a very young age and persist into adulthood. I agree with this. There are a number of factors that go into why a juvenile may commit a crime at a young age, especially a lot of social factors. Their early life, their parents, and their childhood overall play a very big role into their criminal careers, not just the type of people they grew up with or the crowd that they fell into. This has been Bret Hardy with Fact or Fiction. I'm Joy Fragioni. Welcome back to Street Talk. And this week, we'll be asking everyone if they have a real Christmas tree or a fake Christmas tree. So I'm here with uh, Finn and Finn. Um, I'm wondering, like, do you have a real Christmas tree or a fake Christmas tree? I got an actual real Christmas tree, believe it or not. Really? Where do you get it from? Uh, we imported it from Vermont. Really? My dad cut it down, and it's currently in the living room right now. That? How big is it? Big enough. Like, do you know how many feet? Um, several feet. Wow. <laughs> That's the ceiling. That's amazing. So I'm here with a whole gang of uh, Nasi Regional High Schoolers, and I'm with Will, Jeffrey, Cam, Bryn, Sky, and Pat. And um, you know, guys, we are just really curious of what type of Christmas tree do you have? Is it real? Is it fake? So, Will, would you like to start us off? Um, I don't have a Christmas tree. Why? I don't celebrate Christmas. Jeffrey? <laughs> I have a fake tree. You have a fake tree? Yeah. Cam? I got a real one. Where do you get it from? Uh, I got mine in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. But you, hear, you heard it here first. Corinne? I have a real tree. Where do you get it from? Um, somewhere in Dennis. <laughs> yep, okay. I love dogs. Uh, Sky? I have both. Ooh. Ooh! So where do you get your real tree from? Uh, somewhere in Harwich. Nice. And um, Pat? Uh, I have a real one. I got it imported from Canada. You did? Yes. <laughs> nice. How many feet is it? Uh, like... I had a 30 foot one, but then I had to cut it down to like 10 feet. Yeah. That's tragic. It is. Well, thank you guys. How big is your tree? Um, oh, good question. Real fake. I actually have a real Christmas tree. I haven't got it yet. I usually get it from this place in Dennis, but I don't know if we are this year, so I might have to get it from this place in Brewster. And I think usually my tree is around like 7 feet tall, and yeah. So I'm with Jason, and Jason, let me know if your Christmas tree is real or is it fake. Big Christmas tree because it's kind of a pain to clean up and it's just easier. That's true. Do you know where you get your fake Christmas tree from? I'm not sure. No. Do you know how it's tall it is? Uh, it's about six six foot nine. So I'm with Tulula, aka Kitty, and Tulula. Let me know if you have a real Christmas tree or a fake Christmas tree. I have a fake Christmas tree, but it smells like a real one. And my mom decided to get a fake one because she like. Actually, I don't know why she did it, but my mom made the decision to get a fake one, like, last year. Yeah. Well, do you know where you got it from? No. I feel like part of the tradition is getting a tree, but honestly, I don't really care that much because I don't get the tree. Yeah, true. Well, so, yeah. thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I'm here with Ava and Ava. Let me know if you have a real Christmas tree or a fake Christmas tree. Um, real, of course. <laughs> I would never get a fake Christmas so, tree. So, like, where do you get your Christmas tree? Um, actually, it's a tradition with my family, and we go to um, Patriot Square in Dennis and get our tree every year. Ah. Yeah. I sometimes my family goes there too. Yeah, yeah. Do you, pretty common. Do you know how big your Christmas tree usually is? Um, it's usually well, I move around a lot, so like, um, like my house is like this year it's about five feet. It's usually around like six or seven. Though. Your house or your tree? My tree. Okay. <laughs> That makes sense. Yeah. Well, Ava, I want to thank you for your time here. Thank you, Jay. And Merry Christmas. Merry and I hope Christmas. you have a great Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thanks for watching this week's version of Street Talk. I'm Joey Fragioni, and we'll see you next week.